Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. This morning we're going to be riding on Suzuki's GSXS 750. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. Alright guys, here it is. Suzuki's 2020 GSX 750. This is a middleweight plus sized Street Fighter style naked bike from Suzuki. Now, this motorcycle is positioned above Suzuki's SV650 and SV650X, and it's positioned below the GSX1000. This is a real world functional working man's naked bike. $8,500, yes, $8,500 for this thing, which isn't very much money considering you get a 750cc water-cooled i4 engine, inverted fork, radial brakes, it has traction control, it is a little bit more rudimentary, but it does employ it, and of course, it inherits Suzuki's super high ride quality these motorcycles are very well engineered in terms of their ride dynamic and throttle response and suspension calibration all these things and to have a motorcycle that only costs eighty five hundred dollars that is a great deal but enough talking about it let's swing a leg over the jix s 750 and see what it's like to ride all right guys a good old-fashioned mechanical key thank you suzuki this bike has Suzuki's Easy Start Assist, which means you press the starter button and the starter engages and you don't have to hold the starter button. It's kind of a, it's a feature, but it's kind of a meanless feature almost. This bike also has Suzuki's Low RPM Assist. What that is, is when you release the clutch, it automatically feeds the engine a little bit of fuel to help get the motorcycle moving. So if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of experience working the clutch, that feature will be nice because it'll help prevent you stalling when you take off. All right guys, right away, sitting on this GSXS 750 i always like the ergonomics of Suzuki motorcycles. They feel very comfortable and familiar to me. The seat height is a little bit taller than the Jixer, but not a lot taller. Still relatively close to the ground. The handlebar, I like the handlebar bend, but it does have quite a bit of rearward sweep, just like uh, Triumph's Street Triple RS comes to mind. Not quite as old school feeling as the Street Triple RS, but still a good amount of rearward sweep. Uh, modern bikes like KTM's 890 Duke R have a more forward handlebar control, and that just makes for a more sporting ride when you're riding the motorcycle. Four hundred and sixty five pounds with a four point two gallon fuel load. And even though this motorcycle is a tad porky, you know, four hundred and sixty five pounds is not light at all. This bike feels really light when it's in motion. Really like the suspension on this machine. We spent a good amount of time eating up corners on one of my favorite sport bike roads here in Southern California and this motorcycle not only does it deliver good ride quality over bumps in in the city it also has a good amount of road holding when you're getting after it in the canyons I like how versatile this chassis is it gives you the best of both worlds and when you're buying a naked bike like this that's what you really want and away we go. Clutch is nice and light. It has 
just the right amount of lever pull to make you feel like you're riding a real substantial motorcycle. It's important to note that this clutch design does not have slipper action functionality. This whole powertrain in this bike, if you can even believe it, is 15 years old. This powertrain was sourced from Suzuki's 2005 spec GSX R750. Uh, that motorcycle platform was known for its bigger bore, shorter stroke configuration that did not have a slipper clutch. So realistically when you're riding around town like we are now it's not a deal breaker but when you're riding in the canyons if you don't if you downshift too quickly at too high of an rpm and don't feather the clutch properly it can have a little bit of rear wheel instability not a deal breaker but just we gotta ride this bike the old-fashioned way with a little bit of clutch feathering during downshifts just to mitigate that rear wheel instability from the compression braking but not a deal breaker six speed transmission chain final drive i really like the transmission in this bike the gear ratios are properly suited for the application of this bike uh, it has a lot of pep off the line this thing gets up and goes very well it almost feels every bit as fast as a Jixxer 750 sport bike in the lower gears you know where it really doesn't feel like a Jixxer 750 sport bike is when you start wailing on this thing at, at higher rpm it comes off the bottom and and the mid-range is quite stout too but when you really get this thing revving it just doesn't have the beans of the sport bike but at the same time it certainly sounds the part it's got a nice mean throaty growl it it's playful the power band doesn't necessarily just sign off it 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 still has a good amount of power at high rpm it just doesn't have that that power hit like we would expect to have with the 750 sport bike on the dyno this thing pumped out last time we downed it right around 95 horsepower. Uh, 95 horsepower. Uh, for comparison, a Jixxer 750 does about 128, around 128 horsepower. So quite a bit less than its sport bike brother, but like I said, in the lower gears, and as long as you're not riding this thing at, at at super high rpm it feels very very peppy engines fairly devoid of vibration there's not a lot of vibration being felt through the controls which i like this naked bike i've never generally a big fan of naked bikes i generally like sport bikes and bikes that have a full front fairing i like to get my torso and head out of the elements and i like the comfort and tranquility a windscreen and conventional front fairing provides this bike obviously doesn't have that nor does any naked bike which makes it less touring capable less freeway capable in terms of outright comfort but i don't discern any annoying buffeting or anything strange again i like the playful nature of the power band of this motorcycle it's got a nice air induction howl the exhaust note has a little bit of pep yet isn't so loud that it's gonna annoy you LCD dashboard keeps tabs on the parameters of this motorcycle. We've been averaging right around 32 miles per gallon, but to be fair, we've been riding this thing pretty much only in the canyons at high RPMs. That's why the gas mileage is so crappy. If you ride it at a more sedate pace, you're going to see MPG figures right around 38, 39 MPG.
I like that this bike has a fuel gauge. I like that it's got a gear position indicator so you know which cog you're in. This GSX-S 750 comes with Suzuki's traction control. This is a more rudimentary system compared to the other manufacturers. Not all, all of them, but manufacturers like KTM with their 890 Duke R. That electronic system is much more advanced. This thing has wheel speed sensors that help crunch information to the ECU. It also has throttle angle, crankshaft position RPM, uh, gear shift position. It uses these parameters to help calculate wheel slip. Three levels of adjustment plus off. I like that you can make adjustments on the fly. You can even turn off traction control while you're riding. A lot of motorcycle manufacturers don't offer that feature, but Suzuki does. Realistically, it's nice that this bike has traction control, but like we said, it's a more rudimentary system and it doesn't really make the motorcycle easier to ride in an advanced rider's hands. It curtails the power less accurately than it would on a more contemporary system like the 890 Dugar, but still, it's neat that Suzuki offers it. You can also add ABS to this motorcycle for a $400 upcharge. This particular GSX-S 750 at $8,500 does not have ABS. I like it doesn't have ABS. I'm a manual braking kind of person. Unless ABS is done exquisitely perfect, I don't generally like it. And this manual setup non-ABS version is totally fine for me. Nissan monoblock four piston radio calipers keep front wheel speed in check. Got a rear disc brake keeping the rear wheel speed in check. Brakes work very well. Good amount of bite, good amount of power. I like the ability to adjust this brake lever in five position increments. So you can move the front brake lever for or back based on the position of your hand. There's no radial master cylinder. Usually that's a big, big gripe for me, but for some reason on this bike, the braking package for the amount of engine power this bike has isn't too much, so it doesn't really even need a radial master cylinder. Radial master cylinders are always welcome features though in my book. All right guys, we're about to hop on the freeway here see what this bike's freeway pedigree is like. This motorcycle rolls on Bridgestone's Batlax S21 tire. That is a very nice high performance sport bike tire from Bridgestone. I have ridden on this tire for many years now and I really like it. I like its profile, it isn't too aggressive, it's not too neutral, it has good grip in the wet and the dry, they last decently well, they're fairly communicative, and they have a good price point, so it's nice to see this GSX S 750 rolling on a premium grade Bridgestone current product offering. A lot of Suzuki's motorcycles for whatever using for whatever reason still run older style rubber like the Hayabusa still has that VT015 which is you know way older than an 8 10 year old tire so it's good to see Suzuki fitting something contemporary on this machine here on the freeway there is no cruise control we do not have ride by wire this is a cable actuated throttle connection between the throttle bodies and the throttle tube so no cruise control cruising at 86 miles per hour in top gear i like this bike there is a hint of engine vibration but it certainly isn't excessive 
fairly comfortable riding position. The foot pegs aren't too tall, nor are they too low. And that rearward sweep we were talking about, it pays dividends in terms of just sheer free weight comfort. When you have your hands out here, it just makes more of a stretch. Here's just a real natural freeway touring type position. So good compromise. It's not the sportiest thing, but it's also not the most mundane uh, ergonomics package, which works good for just general all around riding. All right, guys, we're on the boring freeway slog for a while. We're going to cut out for now and tune in back with you guys in a little bit here. All right, guys, we are exiting the boring freeway slog, and this GSX S750 is fairly freeway capable. We didn't talk about the mirrors, but I do like the mirrors. They have a good surface area and they have a fairly clear view of what's going on behind you and that engine let's give her some beans listen to that thing love the sound of this engine love how much power it has in the lower gears this thing gets with the program like i said it you know first second third gear it feels every bit as fast as a Jixer 750 until you reach the top end of course we talked a little bit about the handling how this thing has very good ride quality over bumps in the city yet has that sporting aptitude when the road gets twisty compared to the Jixer Jixer 600 750 this thing rolls on KYB suspension where that bike has Showa components and these KYB suspenders actually work really well although they only have spring preload adjustment fore and aft the the fixed damping calibration is really good thing doesn't have too little compression too little rebound it doesn't deliver a pogo pogo you ride it's a very very supple uh, and, and well-performing rods, especially when you're getting some in the corners. Again, those Bridgestone Batlax S21 tires pay dividends here. They have a lot of grip. They feel good. This is a fun motorcycle to ride around town and in the canyons. So good job Suzuki at having something that's versatile and even though it doesn't have the most high-end spec components with adjustment, it still gets the job done and puts a smile on my face. We rode this motorcycle after dark and the halogen headlamp, well, it's a halogen headlamp, so it's not gonna be anywhere near as bright as compared to a modern LED system. Once you ride motorcycles with well set LED headlamps, you're never going to want to ride anything else. So come on, Suzuki, give us an LED headlamp. It's worth noting that the taillight is LED, but the turn signal bulbs are also halogen. So this thing could be improved with an LED headlamp. But again, $8,500 is the cost of this motorcycle. And you really get a lot for that, that cash outlet. Ooh, yes, we get to use the brakes. Love the brakes on this bike. Plenty of power, plenty of feel. The only thing that's not awesome is there's no slipper clutch, but we can live. Love giving this thing the beans. This engine sounds so awesome. It just sounds just like a sport bike. That wah, wah. Good job, Suzuki. All right, guys, there she is. Suzuki's 2020 GSX S750. $8,500 for this motorcycle. And I really do enjoy riding this bike. Water-cooled inline four 
performance, an adept chassis, even though it's got a steel frame and swing arm and more budget KYB suspend suspenders, this thing can get some. Brakes are good, throttle response is good, fairly comfortable, doesn't have a lot of engine vibration, looks okay. I like the look of this motorcycle. You know, the, the steel frame looks like a twin spar alloy setup and it's a pretty decent looking motorcycle. Again, $8,500. $8,500 usually doesn't get you a lot, but this bike offers incredible value in the middleweight naked bike class. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A real quick. See what's going on. GSX S750 or SV650, great question. I like both bikes. I would buy this GSX S750 because this thing is a full-sized motorcycle that can go fast and deliver big bike-like performance. The SV650 is good, but it doesn't quite give big bike-like performance. Jixus 750 or CBR 650R, great question. I love the CBR 650R. I love the styling of that thing. But $8,500, this thing gives you more performance, gives you better value. If you can stand the aesthetics of this motorcycle, absolutely I would buy this Jixus 750. How does the engine and gearbox compare to the KTM 790 Duke? KTM 790 Duke, not one of my favorite motorcycles. The 890 Duke R is, but the 790 is not. This thing has better suspension components than the Duke 790. It's got way more stomp on the engine. It is just a much better motorcycle all around than the 790 Duke. It's also way less expensive. I would buy this over the 790 Duke. It's not even close. Uh, gearbox, also the gearbox on this thing is super slick shifting. No misshifting, no weird in between gears. Uh, very quality motorcycle built in Japan. Can you forgive the way it looks for the way it rides? Ha ha ha, very funny, that's a good one. Yes I can because it rides so dang good that I can forgive its questionable front end. Suzuki always likes this weird cartoonish Japanese anime style styling and I'm not a big fan of it, but because this motorcycle is so functional, I can live with it. All right guys, that's a wrap from this edition of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Of course, log on to our website at MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where you can read uh, my review, see some more photos, and see what's up with this machine further. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Thumbs it down if you thought it was stupid. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And one more thing before we go, would I spend my $8,500 on this 2020 GSX-S 750? I absolutely would. I like riding this bike a lot. It's got decent power, it sounds cool, it handles good in the canyons, it delivers a comfortable ride. It only costs $8,500. I absolutely would totally buy this bike. It's made in Japan, it's high quality. This thing will go the distance.